Hey guys, what's going on? Hey YouTubers. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at my office tank right now and we're starting to have problems with this tank because everything's starting to overgrow. You see my coral in the center here, my zoas and all these guys. They're all starting to, you can see right here, uh, get so close to each other they're almost touching tips. And my guys encrusting on the back wall there, my orangeicle, my Pikachu, whatever you want to call them. And then I got a little bit of bleaching going on up here up on top. If it's not brown jelly or anything that's happening with the coral, it's a emerald crab. They do this every once in a while. They go, they try to eat detritus or whatever lays on top of the monkey caps. And then what they do is they actually get down into the tissue of the coral that it starts to bleach out a little. And then this is gonna cover up again and it's gonna be fine. They do this every once in a while. Um, other than that, I've been considering now getting a frag tank because uh, I desperately need one. I don't wanna do these little frag rack thing up on top where I got coral growing. You can see I haven't even taken this guy out. He's already freaking branching out in the frag rack. So it's not that I'm lazy. It's just um, to get people to come over or to get these characters into a new home it's just you know my workload just is so busy right now that it's hard for me to post these things online and get people over here or take them to my local lfs i haven't even gone to my lfs and i went last no not even last week two weeks ago just to get some food some macari um frozen mysis and spirulina and which is brine and a few other things Yes, Kona, don't worry, I'm sorry, I'm talking, I know. So, um, yeah, you can see uh, fish are doing well, cores are doing fine. See my beautiful powder blue, nice and healthy. Kona, it's okay, I'm just talking, I'm just talking, I'm just talking. So, um, Akins are doing okay. Yes, Kona, I'm talking, hold on. Yeah, Akins are doing fine, and just these guys right here have been not doing so well. It's because of the powder blue, the powder blue has been whatchamacallit um nipping at the akins lately and stuff he's been nipping at coral in this tank not severely not enough for me to be of concern but i took him coral out and placed him somewhere else and in other tanks fortunately and um now i'm just gonna just uh just let it be and just see what happens and see what i might put here i might actually frag out another zoa maybe um i don't know uh I don't know the name of it, but I'll just get a nice good Zoa and place them right here and let them just grow out right here where this old um, flower pot coral used to be at. And so far, everything's going really well with this tank. Really well. Everything's growing. So my characters here, my, um, what is it? Uh, um, I forgot the name of the coral. Uh, it's not my branching hammer. It's my, um, what is it, what is it, what is it? It's not the freaking torch. It's my chalices, my chalice. There we go. Yeah, see? Can't even think of the names. Well, my chalices here have been literally fighting each other. You can see that I literally needed to cut off some brown jelly that was occurring here because these two characters are not coexisting. They're actually fighting. So this guy is actually beating. What is it, the green mummy eye? Is that what it is? I'm not sure but um these two chalices have been fighting i've moved them over here and he will heal he was fighting last time up on top over here and he already healed up and now he's got to heal up here so we'll see what's going on with that but they're just growing the tank is growing i see a lot of encrusting going on and um this guy up here is actually pretty cool he's actually encrusting over a little frag right there and the little frag is not actually dying out, it's just being taken over. But he's been getting some nice, cool, like white, bluish, um, you can say, uh, heads on the, off, his, uh, off his branches, so, or tips. So he gets the bluish tips right there. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's like a white, whitish, bluish color. Actually, it looks pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's like snow on top of a mountain but um so far everything's doing well in this tank 
Everything's doing super good. Everything's just growing over everything. And um, you can see my utter chaos colony is just growing over that, what is that, a jack-o'-lantern or whatever. And um, there's my Walt Disney. It's almost gonna be overtaken, I hope not. You can see some blue and some yellowish at the tips right there. And it's doing really fine, he likes it. And the Zoas, the utter chaos Zoas, um, they don't seem to overtake the coral, but they're definitely growing all around the coral. So you can see, I just have so much of everything going on here. You can see my dendros. You can see all the little babies underneath there. Look at that. It is growing, spreading around. Check out this view here. Look at that. That's a beautiful tank. Colonies are growing out, doing very, very well. Yes, yeah, Kona, I know. I'll feed you right now. Don't worry. I think my dog's hungry. So I'm going to go ahead and feed her but yeah this tank is doing awesome everything's doing well see the sump down here let me turn the light on everything down here is doing fine and stuff and you know i have the uh ghl prophylax <laughs> my dog's licking my face i have the ghl prophylax that's gonna be going into here i think it's the ghl prophylax 4e and I'm going to be monitoring temperature and it's going to be controlling the temperature. Um, and uh, sorry, corner, relax. And um, it will be monitoring my pH as I do have my pH monitor separately on my pinpoint, monitoring the pH also in this system. So you can see everything's going well. You know, I don't have like a showcase sump, but it's definitely, you know, it works. And obviously you can see from up here, it's obviously working. I got the geo reactor here, dosing two little fishies uh, acro power on this side here. And then this over here is iodine, which I am not dosing. I dose it when I need it. And same thing with certain things over here also. Um, I am dosing sulfate and magnesium. And I do dose some trace elements also, the new yoice trace elements because uh, the calcium reactor will dose trace elements also from the reactor, you know, as it's being broken down by the CO2, which is the carbon. And it does produce uh, trace elements back. It, it does um, throw back trace elements into the system, but I find that dosing trace elements besides what comes out of the reactor actually is more beneficial for the coral. I don't know what the consumption is, but it's nothing harmful. My parameters seem to be in check. Um, I'm going to do an ICP test just to see where I'm at, but other than that, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, um, my other levels themselves, when it comes to sulfate, when it comes to boron, when it comes to manganese, when it comes to vanadium, when it comes to zinc, when it comes to nickel, when it comes to potassium, when it comes to what, what else is there? You know, Jesus Christ, there's so many different things, so many different elements out there. But, um, you know, lithium, so many different things. But I dose what is necessary for the tank. I keep it as simple as possible. And what I'm only dosing now is basically what's coming out of the calcium reactor, which is alkalinity and calcium, magnesium, sulfate. And I am dosing some boron to keep the pH stable which the pH has been very stable. It's in the range of drops down to a uh, 7.8 and then it'll uh, rise back up to an 8.2. But other than that, everything's going well. Sorry, I'm just uh, a little confused right now with what I'm saying because look, look at my dog's right here and she wants, to, she wants to eat, huh, baby? Yes, I know, I know, you're getting hungry. I know. Okay, okay. So yeah, see you. Hey guys, what's up? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, let me turn on the light here. But um, other than that, everything's going fine with this tank. And um, sorry for the shakiness. But this tank is doing really awesome. I definitely got to start fragging. I definitely got to start, you know, see what I can do to control the growth in this tank. Because the growth in this tank is just out of control and that's one of the reasons why i haven't put a calcium reactor on my 
dominant SPS Red Sea tank, the 525XL, is because, you know, I, you know, we're always constantly learning, and there's always constantly new methods out there that we can try to get things going. But I'm beyond trial and error. You know, I got my recipe. I, 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 you know, my things work. My my methods work. And if, as long as I see coral growth, I see stability. I see fishes staying healthy. You know, I rarely get fish death. And you can see I still have my same four antheas. There's one, two, three. There's my blending. There's my fish. You know, it's, it's um, where's the other fourth one and stuff? He comes out every once in a while. There's my copper band down there. You know, it, it's, it, it's fine. And, and I'm, you know, there's other things out there that, and other YouTubers. And I love to listen to live streams. I am a live stream listener. But I like to listen. I already have my methods and I already been through trial and error like I've discussed before and why am I going to try to jump into that again. I love the hobby. I love coming home looking at beautiful coral and fish and all these little constraints, const what is it, uh, crustaceans growing around and moving around and it's like definitely it's just why change things when things are working. So I know. If I'm gonna change anything, it's gonna be my my uh, yeah my um, controller. You can see if you want to take a glimpse at the at the Red Sea tank right here, the 525. It's doing very awesome. It's doing fine. You can see clams and everything doing good in there. You can see the growth over there. And this doesn't even have a calcium reactor, and it's doing really good. And um, I'm afraid that if I do put a calcium reactor on this, I think it's just going to overgrow too quickly, you know, and, you know, I'd rather have growth, you know, at a, at a point where it's, I'm happy to just see it grow, not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, what is it, uh, a guy who tries to grow coral to sell coral, I like to see it grow because I just love the beauty of it and just seeing success in your own system while you see things grow is just, it's just it's just a great feeling it's a great feeling to have and i hope all you guys out there are having that feeling as well you know um stick to a method that works listen to people that you actually have trust in to listen you know what is it? just like uh in Re just like rico aquarium says you know just like rico says you know they got to have a business card and this is the business card you know and um yeah mm -hmm. You can see my tanks over here are doing fine too. These, these guys over here are doing great. And there's this clusterfuck of corals, which I'm going to do an upgrade soon. But if we take a walk over here, I'm going to show you guys really quick. I don't know if you guys can see. Let me see here. Let me turn the light on here. This is my son's room. And, um,. Oh, his old room and um you can see in here i got so much equipment here most of it is my this is my girlfriend's uh reefer xl 200 which we have not gotten gotten things going yet because she is still in the works at her new place we're still getting things together but this is two profilux 4e starter sets um ghl controller slash monitors and um, I'm going to uh, connect one on each tank because I got one, two, and I'm going to get a third one coming in. I got an extra power bar for the one in the 525, and then I'm going to put one on the living room tanks, and I'm going to put another one, of course, in the office. And um, this right here is the Mini. Now, this one, this is for my girlfriend. You know, we decided to go with uh, GHL and not Apex just because of the fact that I've been, you know... Uh, I, I, I just, the quality, the reliability, I think is just in, 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 in the reviews from what I'm hearing is just Prophylux just seems to have just that, that quality and, and that reliability that I look for in, in, in a controller. If, I wish Digital Aquatics was still around, but they're not. So, you know, they're a very reliable product. I am going to start, um, I'm going to start cycling this rock. I'm going to get a bin. Put a heater, put a pump, 
um, put some nitrifying bacteria in there and uh, get this going. I'll probably, probably drop a damsel in there and just feed a little bit of mysis or something, but we'll get a bin going. So this rock will be ready for my girlfriend for when we're ready to place it into her tank. At least it has some uh, cycling time going in. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, things are going well. Things are going really well. Hi, Ellie. Say hi. <laughs> yeah so things are going well sorry for the blackout and um yeah it's just going back to the office tank uh things are going really fine over here and it's just beautiful tank to look at super growth going on these monty caps are growing everywhere they're overgrowing around the coral there's coral growing over coral. It's just warfare, it's beauty, and it's ocean in my home. All right, guys, just remember stability and patience is the key. You know, stability. Keep your, keep your parameters in a range. Don't chase numbers. You know, once you have them in a stable range of things, everything should just set itself, and your ecosystem should just thrive and keep thriving. Do your water changes, you know, don't let up on, on checking the system when it comes to water testing. Water testing is key. You know, even me, sometimes I'll just say, hey, uh, not this week, I'll do it next week. But we are people and, you know, we do what we do and stuff like that to make sure that things end up just going right, not wrong. So try to keep it on the right path and not the wrong path. But other than that, keep this hobby fun for you. Don't make it stressful. Don't make it complicated. Just keep it simple. Once you get everything in gear, once you get things like this set, basically you just leave it alone. All you gotta do is just maintain your equipment, clean your equipment. You know, it's not an everyday thing. It's not a weekly thing, unless it's the protein skimmer. You know, you gotta clean that protein skimmer cup at least once a week. I do it, you should do it. Um, other than that, everything else just basically takes care of itself. I just dust things off and do my weekly water changes and just stick my hand in the tank once a week to just clean the uh, the, the acrylic. This is an acrylic tank, by the way. All my other tanks are glass, except for the other Achilles tank, which is acrylic. And I've had this acrylic tank for two years and it seems to be going okay for me. And um, I wouldn't have growth like this if, it, if, it, if, the, if the acrylic was all scratched up because I would have taken the corals out by now. I don't like scratch scratches either. But uh, I'm doing fairly well keeping this uh, acrylic uh, knock on wood clean. Anyways, guys, keep it simple. Keep it easy. And uh, just remember, stability and patience is the key. Nobody ever has all the answers. Um, nobody ever knows any, everything when it comes to uh, the saltwater reefing hobby. It's constantly, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hobby that's always, uh, you can say you're always learning something new all the time. <laughs> yes, Colin, I know. And um, yes, you can see my baby's just kissing me because she's hungry. So yeah, anyways, uh, peace out. Just um, patience and stability once again. All right, guys, peace.